Eucharistic miracles are a staple in many devout Catholic households. I remember being told these stories as a kid from my parents and from the pulpit. And back when I was Catholic, I never really looked into these stories. I had no reason to. A Eucharistic miracle simply worked with my worldview. There was no reason for me to approach these stories with any skepticism at all. Until now. I've received a request to dig deeper into Eucharistic miracles by my favorite Catholic YouTuber, Kyle Whittington, channel linked down below. With the caveat that I give them a fair shake, not dismissing anything out of hand, or accusing anybody of any dishonesty without real evidence of dishonesty. Kyle, I hope that I did this topic justice. Let's begin. I'm going to begin my search for Eucharistic miracles where every real research project begins. YouTube. I have searched Eucharistic miracles into the YouTube search bar, and I'm just going to pick the top video called Three Scientifically Proven Eucharistic Miracles. Let's start with the first of the three and see where that gets us. I'm going to go over three Eucharistic miracles that have been examined by top scientists around the world, looked at closely, investigated, scrutinized, and who eventually concluded that science could not explain the miraculous occurrence. This leaves only one logical answer. It must have come from something divine. So I need to pause it right away because that seems like a... Uh, false dilemma. If science cannot explain it, it must come from the divine? Well, that's certainly not the case. Science hasn't been able to explain many things for much more than a few hundred years. Were people justified in believing that everything that science could not explain was divine forever? No, you can't just assume that things are divine simply because you don't understand them. Rather, you must prove that something is divine before you can accept that it's divine. Now, how you prove that something is divine, I have no idea. But simply stating that science can't explain something is not enough to prove that it's non-natural or supernatural or divine. In the 8th century, a priest celebrating Mass in the town of Lanciano, Italy, was having doubts about the true presence of God's body and blood in the Eucharist. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm hearing that the priest is having doubts and the presenter is presenting this information um, as if it's certain. Um, I haven't heard a source yet, um, but unless there's like a first-hand account of the story that says, like, you know, uh, hey, I was the priest and I was having doubts, then I think it's weird to present the information this way. Rather, you know, if you have first-hand accounts of people in the church, you'd say like, you know, the people in the church thought that the priest was having doubts, something like that. Let's keep going. During the Mass, when he said the words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood, the priest noticed something happening. He saw the bread change into living flesh and the wine coagulates into blood, which formed into five globules. Of course, many did not believe it and the local archbishop conducted an investigation and the church approved the miracle. Did the church approve the miracle as in that that parish where it occurred or did the Catholic church like Rome approve the miracle? My understanding is that for the most part, Rome won't confirm the validity of any Eucharistic miracles. They'll just define them as either being like worthy of belief or not, but they won't confirm uh, anything. So let's let's keep watching but still many did not believe, especially scientists. So in 1971, the specimens were analyzed. Whoa, 1971? Weren't we just in the 700s? What happened? I, I feel like we skipped something here. Let me keep watching. By Odiato Linoli, a professor in anatomy, histology, chemistry, clinical microscopy, and former head of the Laboratory of Pathological Anatomy at the Hospital of Arezzo. And in 1971, he published his results, which surprised even himself. Whenever I hear all about one person being in charge of like, a study, I, I worry about like a cult of personality kind of deal. And I also worry about peer review. If the narrator of this video is 
giving all of the credentials of this one scientist, does that mean that he was the only person who analyzed the samples? Was there no peer review? Was this not published in a peer review journal article? Let's, let's keep investigating. And Lenoli's analysis was confirmed in 1981 by Rogerio Batelli, a retired professor of human anatomy. The results concluded that the flesh was cardiac tissue of type AB, with the blood appearing to be fresh, as opposed to 1,200 years old. And there were no traces of preservatives. This left the scientific world in shock with no explanation on how to answer this miracle. And to this day, anyone can visit the flesh and blood of the Eucharistic miracle in the church of San Francesco in Lanciano, Italy. All right, so that video was pretty light on details and had no sources, but uh, now that we've settled on the Eucharistic miracle that we're going to start with, I think that we can search uh, miracle at Lanciano into YouTube and see what we come up with. Um, I've found two sources that are more promising, one being Matt Frad, Pines with Aquinas, doing an interview with Father Terry Donahue, and then the other one being Jimmy Aiken on Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World. Let's see what those sources have to say. And he published his results in 1971. And it's actually in, uh, you know, a, a scientific journal. That's, that it doesn't exist anymore, but it went out of business. <laughs> it wasn't a peer reviewed journal per se, but it was published in, in an accredited journal, we can say at least that. Mm -hmm. And so I can just give you his findings, the Please. summary of them. Uh, so accredited, but not peer reviewed. I don't know what accredited means, if not peer reviewed. Maybe I can find some information about this journal article, but let's check with Jimmy Aiken for now. It's by far the oldest, and it apparently took place in the 700s in Lanciano, Italy. One thing I really like about Jimmy is his just the facts approach. It apparently took place. He doesn't say it as if it's definite, it's apparent. I, I really appreciate that. According to a document written in 1631, in this city, in the convent of St. Langanziano, where the monks of St. Basil lived in about 700 AD, was a monk who, not very steadfast in his faith, lived day by day doubting if the true body of Christ was in the consecrated host, and likewise if the true blood was in the wine. And I'm interested to hear if this account is anonymous or whether it actually has an author. Thus, one morning, in the midst of his sacrifice, after uttering the most sacred words of consecration, while more than ever before caught up in his old mistake, he saw the bread turned into flesh and the wine turned into blood. Now, normally this would not be a very promising case to examine. Uh, we don't have contemporary documentation of it, and the key source we do have was written 900 years after the event. That's pretty bad, 900 years. And in the 1970s and 1980s, the Franciscans, who have custody of the relic, decide to, decided to allow scientific studies of it to be done, using, of course, the scientific techniques that were available at the time, which did not include DNA sequencing, as that hadn't been invented yet, but they were still better tests than at any prior point in history. So, so far, all that I know is that a non-peer-reviewed journal article that is no longer in print printed a uh, essay written by this doctor in 1971 and he says that he analyzed it and said that it was really real human flesh and blood no genetic sequencing was done because that technology wasn't available at the time and no testing has been done in the past 50 years i suppose um that's not a ton of information to go off of but luckily jimmy left um some sources down below um what i like to do in general is to go to wikipedia and then try to follow the wikipedia sources it looks like the wikipedia article that jimmy linked to here is just the general eucharistic uh miracles um uh page but we can probably follow this page uh to the lanciano specific um uh miracle and sure enough we can let's click on the miracle of lanciano right here all right, this is the Miracle of Lanciano page. Let me make that fit the screen a little bit better. 
Um, so great. Okay. Um, we can try to follow some of these uh, links here and see if we can get to the actual sources. So um, the Catholic Church claims the miracle as authentic. Great. Let's follow uh, this uh, link. This goes to number one. Um, okay. Let's see if we can access this source. Okay. This is the Winona Daily News behind a paywall. Let's go back. Okay. Well, let's go to the second one. Mm, this one doesn't look promising. This is just visit the... Yeah. Looks like this is the website of the church or something like that. Hmm. We have the main conclusions from the scientific journal article here, but again, nothing that actually links to the scientific journal article. Okay. Uh, oh, an EWTN article is the next link. Okay. And again, it looks like there is no actual link to the report. Okay. Fourth one, miracles of the church. Site can't be reached. That's not good. All right, we'll go to the fifth one, The Miracle of Lanciano, catholiceducation.org. Scroll through here. Nothing. No other sources listed. Number six. Link appears to be broken. Excellent. Then a letter of JP2 to the Archbishop of Lanciano. Looks like JP2 thought that this was a legitimate miracle. But again, there's nothing in this that links to the actual study. And the last one, the Eucharistic Miracle of Lanciano from the Catholic Leader. Scrolling through. Another short article with no link to the actual work. I cannot find the actual scientific journal article anywhere. And I've been searching for days. If anybody has access to it, please put it in the comment section below. But I would love to read the actual scientific journal article, but I cannot find it. And that really is all of the research that I can do at this time. I couldn't find any more information, and not for lack of trying. That means that it's time to review. The Miracle at Lanciano. We have no contemporaneous sources. The earliest that we hear about this is 900 years after it supposedly occurred. We have a scientific journal article, kinda, one that's not peer-reviewed, one that only had one examiner, and I cannot find the original article or anything about the author. Supposedly, the relic is human heart tissue with blood type AB, and the specimen is very strangely well-preserved, which I cannot explain at this time. Like any good YouTuber, I've made a tier list. This is Kevin's Eucharistic Miracle tier list. Lanciano, being the first miracle, gets S tier. I do think that Lanciano will quickly move down the tier list, and I will not repeat a tier until I have filled up every tier, but Lanciano gets its moment in the spotlight for being the very first miracle that I have reviewed. Given that we have never observed bread turning into human flesh before, I will need rather extraordinary evidence to convince me that a piece of bread has turned into human flesh. Lanciano's evidence is not that extraordinary and does not provide me with enough evidence to think that something supernatural has occurred. Maybe it'll be part of a cumulative case, but since this is the first miracle that I've reviewed, it is not part of a cumulative case yet. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Which Eucharistic miracle should I do next? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks, everybody.